I basically said, I wish we could do something about the, the crisis in Bosnia and the humanitarian disaster. And uh, I said, yeah, well, let's do it. So we decided one evening that we would start sending convoys. Good evening. This week we look at a subject that has received a somewhat indifferent audience in the past, that of the troubles in the former Yugoslavia. Although the media interest in the war has waned of late, there are still many people in Bosnia and Croatia living a hand-to-mouth existence in the refugee camps. A group of humanitarians have taken the plight of these people to their hearts. Based in Winchester, Operation Heart is a wing of the Caritas charity, working to bring aid to the refugees in the region. This group of friends have come... It's so degrading, I imagine, for these people who've lived in normal houses all their lives to be packed in like sardines together, seven to a tiny space, whole families in together, and the smell and the whole state of the buildings which they live in just shocked me. The conditions in the camp are squalid, to say the least. Um, before we arrived um, in December, um, the camp didn't actually have beds or makeshift beds of, of any sort. And in fact, the refugees were lying on floors in the gymnasium. At Pozuje, essentially, it's a, it, it's, a, it's a school building. It's a refugee camp which has been made out of a gymnasium, if you like. Um, and the, the play area, which, which did house the gymnasium, had been bombed. Um, and in fact, there was no roof. So the 500 refugees, 500 odd, um, have been moved into, into a covered room. And they're living like sardines. Uh, they're living on prefabricated wooden bunks. And to give some sort of example, a family, uh, an extended family of eight, are living in a space which is something like nine foot by ten. So you have grandparents, mother, n normally not a father, uh, because either he's dead or he's, he's fighting. The aid that we took out on this convoy was high-value aid. It consisted essentially of um, medicines that we'd been asked to take out. The medicines included two vaccines, um, which we had to take in, um, in a food box packed with ice. We took out medicines for, that, that helped uh, treat uh, traumas, mental traumas, schizophrenia, epilepsy, intrauterine bleeding, um, and bandages. Um, essentially basic medical aid and a tremendous amount of tin food the need um, for more short-term aid is crucial absolutely crucial the charitable events were, were, were very successful we've done various things including street events in, in winchester high street the people of winchester sport is extremely well we did, did it on a, on a saturday morning people are very generous there's always a limit to the sort of funds that you can raise in a, in a relatively small community. So because of that, we decided to work further afield. Once the fundraising got started, we decided to talk to people in London, contacts in London, and also contacts further abroad, which was uh, fruitful, to say the least. I asked him whether we could make an appeal. Now, as you all know, uh, the problem with an appeal for finances at, at the parishes is that, um, is that we're operating together with the Diocesan Appeal Fund and we can't go in to a true two-pronged attack. I think you, you've got to, I mean, just as, as we did the last time, and, and the only way we functioned was to believe that the funds will come and go on that assumption. Caritas has been sending aid since the outbreak of war with the vital assistance of groups such as Operation Heart, supporting the thousands of people in the former Yugoslavia that have been forced out of their homes and into refugee camps. But even though Operation Heart has had a certain amount of success in the past, the need for aid in Bosnia continues, and the quest for donations and help to keep the charity running is a constant and ongoing struggle. I think there's a basic... Uh, human need which we all know exists uh, and that need is f is for survival i mean everyone knows and has heard about the third article of, uh, of the human rights declaration um, and and that is for everyone to uh, to have the right to have life liberty and and security of person and that hasn't been fulfilled <laughs>